Sky Gardens is in the walkie-talkie building. Yeah. Uh, for use of a better word. And um, the building itself is probably not the nicest, but internally, the gardens is it, very spacious. It seems very spacious. It's very generous in the fact that there's not too many obstacles. So I actually, I quite like it internally. I think that would have been a very, that would have almost ruined the experience being uh, a one way. Um, when I went, it was very crowded, full of people. And um, at one moment you might want to look at St. Paul's and at another moment you want to look at the Shard. So you've got the freedom to walk around. Um, and it's a very unregimented space. Um, I think it doesn't really lend itself as a space to a one-way uh, system. Um, it, it does lend itself to people just making up their own journey. In the space physically, maybe you think about accessibility, how easy it is for everyone to get up there. There were quite a lot of steps. I, yeah. I found the first space more interesting because of the, the level changes mm. and the dynamism. I like the sky guard. The sky guard, actually, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think it's, you know, the fact that you are at the top of London, yeah. you get the, yeah. the little glimpses of the shard, you know, the, um, the gherkin. It's, yeah. Yeah. And, and the, it's the drama of the space as well. Yeah. Because yeah. I think particularly when the, the, the balcony, mm. when you approach mm. that and when you look over the, yeah. the yeah. railing, you do get yeah. that slightly sort of ooh, not quite vertigo <laughs> feeling but that that feeling yeah. of of height and scale mm. that you would in mm. reality um i think the other space because it was much larger mm. more linear horizontal yeah. didn't quite have the same yeah. Yeah. spatial dexterity yeah somewhere. yeah um, i quite like the idea of the curve circulation yeah. i think it yeah. adds a bit of interest to it it could be like quite nice to i mean even doing things like meetings. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm. I know where. Uh, I know like the metaverse. Mm. There's a lot of discussions about uh, meeting virtually in a space, and I think that could be quite nice. If you, especially something like a winter garden, is you can just go there, have a meeting there, um, and the, to to the degree that Enscape and the ability to visualize improves. Um, I think it'll make the experience so much more um, enjoyable. I think, I think both spaces would be quite useful for like virtual socialising when physical is unable. For the virtual uses, I think it would be, would be useful for conferences for networking to really? provide a bit ah, more nice. for people to walk around and they kind of like bump mm. into people mm. and have a bit of a spontaneous conversation. Because we, we've used Gavatown for our conferences mm. before, mm. and that, that, that kind of gets that kind of, or you can walk up to people and have a chat. But then this would be obviously a bit more immersive, mm. um, a bit more 3D walking mm. around. I, th I think for me, you know, these spaces are predominantly about taking the views of the skyline mm. and you know the, the mm. drama and the spectacle mm. of that. That's yeah. what that's what would always yeah. draw me yeah. to the, the yeah. top of a building yeah. to, to see yeah. the city from a height, yeah, to true. test the environment. Really, I think it's it's good to be able to. If you're exhibiting things there, if you're putting on a show, that sort of thing, it's quite good to be able to just mock it all up first before you actually commit to that expenditure and maybe get people to, you know, a number of people to, to test it out on that basis. I suppose it gives you a large opportunity to visit these sort of places. Like we obviously being in Austin wouldn't get a chance going out to London often. Um, I don't think it will replace that sense of maybe well-being or something you get from that space of visiting nature. I think it's still quite cool to have a dike and get a different view. Yeah, so I think there's definitely a positive in that during when during lockdowns and things you can. It's another space to meet people. It's another another way to socialise remotely. Um, which I think, which I think, looking back, would have been really helpful. Um, I suppose the negative would be it could then exclude people from certain social groups if they couldn't afford the VR headset. Um, maybe a negative mental health kind of implication from it. If people start replacing their physical experiences completely with virtual, especially for visiting sort of kind of garden spaces, where I think it's quite important to kind of almost get the fresh air and get the exercise of walking around. If, you know, if somebody, particularly, you know, if they're stuck in a small flat for mm days on end you know they're not able to go anywhere i guess just 
that sense of being able to explore places um you know it would never be quite the same yes, but i course, still yeah. think it's yeah it's better than not also what was quite nice was the trigger system okay i think that made a big difference yeah. the the interact and i also it's also nicer in endscape being able to see the buttons the visual side of the crossrail was better. Okay. I think. Very immersive environment. They both had, um, you know, great sense of accuracy to them in terms of their modelling, their rendering, mm. their lighting yeah. conditions. Yeah. They felt, you know, very, very realistic. So. But probably the second system, more intuitive for me to use personally. The first one was the one I preferred the most out of the ones we okay. tried. But I do like the idea of the treadmill because I think yeah. that adds back into if you were using this space for like a social meetup and things, you're getting a bit of your walking yeah. exercise yeah. in there. So I think that would be interesting to try. But out of the ones I did try, I like the yeah, number B being able to move around quickly. Great. Especially changing materials has got to be a great way to see it. I had to use it, um, get an instant, instantaneous feel for how they come together. Um, from the client perspective, I think, again, it's, it, it, it's something which could be very used. And I think it's the sort of thing which would impress clients. I can imagine, um, especially as a technology developer. I think for me, the, the lighting was the most impressive. Great, yeah. For me, it's just, yes, yeah, the experience of testing a space, being able to mm. change the environment, to change the materials, to change the planting to be able to to optimize a design you know i think that's i've always felt for clients that's something yeah particularly important because clients usually you know non-architects and you know not trained to be able to visualize space they they sometimes struggle with it and i think for anybody to be able to have that sort of experiential journey through the building is um always a good thing because it allows them to understand what it would be like in reality. I mean, with, with my own project, I'm thinking I would like the opportunity to be able to do this, but time constraints, etc., is probably unlikely. Funnily enough, when we bought our house, did design it all on like 2D models, mm. or but very like basic, like just drawing out plans of it to decide oh, what furniture is yeah. going to go where. And it was quite time consuming. So I guess building it in 3D, there must be have that time-consuming challenge must increase even more um, but then it was really useful mm. um, yeah so I guess that the time to build the models could be the most could be a challenge and then also whether like the the model actually captures like the materials used um, um, but I guess uh, yeah is it getting the comp completely right shade of red and the lighting and things in the space and um, capturing that within the models could yeah. be a challenge I think yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 2D did its purpose but yeah. 3D would have been it would have it would have brought extra benefits yeah well I, I think we've got to a stage where the, the technology is affordable it's portable I don't see any reason why more people aren't mm. using it now you know you get yeah. programs on mm. television where mm. you know yeah. people have makeovers yeah. of houses I've yeah. done many many house extensions and things yeah. over the years yeah. my i always worked in 3d Great. models yeah. my clients found them very helpful yeah. one of my business partners worked in 2d mm. often there'd be problems there on site mm. because clients would say i didn't think yeah. it was going to be yeah. like this because they yeah. can't read the yeah. drawings yeah. and using you know vr takes it to the next level because you can show people section drawings axonometrics perspectives they can get a, a good indication of what those spaces might be like but there's never going to be anything as immersive as actually being in that space being able to change the materials being able to change the lighting conditions from the design perspective i think integrating it into a design system and a system of use which is quite intuitive and doesn't require too much software learning etc if you imagine if in the scenario that an architect designs a space 
and then they're just able to put this headset on and walk around and then experience it um, without having to, you know, export it to a new software. Very good, actually. I think, it, like, I think what was nice, I was worried when I was doing this that I'd start to feel ill and have a headache, eye strain, but I've not felt that at all, which is, um, yeah, really good to see. Generally, really enjoyed it. Um, it's really cool getting out into the spaces, and I think it was quite intuitive to use for the most part. Um, there was, I think, towards the end of the second study, yeah. started feeling a little bit more little kind of bit of kind of maybe blur vision a bit of sickness creeping in yeah and i maybe because things were changing around me and yeah. i didn't experience anything i don't think okay um, yeah second one maybe a combination of the flying and things changing around and there's there's seems to be a bit more going on around me so yeah, yeah. only very slight dizziness yeah. from the second experiment yeah and that was from moving forwards and vertically but i think when you just move forwards and side to side at once, that's fine. That's great. And it was only, only briefly.